Yeah. What's up, everybody? I'm back. Yes, sir. Lockout Man Podcast. Yo, we got a few topics. We got a few topics to go over right quick. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yo. This uh, particular topic right here, man, is, is going on right now. It's crazy. Small business owners, man. Truck drivers that own their own trucks. They need help out here. These brokers is not giving them what they want. It's not giving them what they want. These freights, these rates is, is ridiculous. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it right quick. These freight rates out here for these owner operators and these uh, independent contractors. It's crazy. What's going on, guys? Lockout men in the truck. What's going on? How y'all feeling? Welcome back to another podcast. Yo. I mean, I, I, I talked to so many I talked to so many owner operators uh, that I haven't brought on a podcast that I will be getting a, more owner operators to come on a podcast to chop it up and 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 talk to me about how they feel about getting raped. Pretty much they're getting raped out here, man. And and as as for myself, that's. That's inspiring to own my own truck and to go into the trucking business. I, I need to know and understand how to deal with these type of brokers out here. These type of these 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 type of brokers that's that's giving us shit rates. You know what I'm saying? And I need to learn how to deal with that. Well, check it out, man. Check it out. I um I came across a couple of a a, a a a couple of people a couple of a couple of videos that they have made about their situations dealing with brokers brokers that's 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 giving them cheap freight that's offering them cheap freight you know the last one I talked about remember I told you guys that they offered him a dollar a little bit under a dollar a mile. Are y'all making money? Now, the same guy, Rick, he's back with another video and he he didn't want he just wanted to let you guys know that honestly, the the brokers are are raping you guys pretty much. Trinity Logistics. Now I'm not I'm not hip to them, but he he had an email from from a young lady that that uh, sent him an email, and honestly, she just pretty much came on and said, "Yo, yeah, we 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 doing you guys bad. We we doing you guys real bad, and um, and you can't do nothing about it now." Being that she pretty much put, I mean, put her, uh, put the company up under the bus. I'm not sure if she's going to be continuing to work there. But let's listen in on the conversation between him and the young lady. I'm going to call her and we're going to do this live. Uh, see if I can find her number. <laughs> With no haircut, man. This is Angela. Hey, Angela. Good morning. Hey, this is Rick Santiago. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm all right. Listen, uh, I'm going to let you know right now that you are going to be an instant celebrity. You're on Facebook uh, Facebook Live right now. Um, okay. I read your message, and uh, I want, I'm going to read what you said. Uh, I wanted to let you know that you are totally right about the brokers. I work for Trinity Logistics, and they are ripping off the drivers. We made a profit from one hundred and sixty to two hundred thousand dollars per month, so you have an idea. 
Is this what you sent me? That is correct. Okay. Um, why are you coming out and doing this? Because I think it's the fair thing to do. Um, drivers have been very committed with this pandemic, um, and it's the right thing to do. Okay, well, um, so I'm going to ask you some questions and uh, that, that are based on a, a lot of what people uh, are asking. Um, how much of the percentage of the load do you guys actually keep for yourself? Um, roughly, what, 65%? I mean, uh, we have to make a profit of at least three to $400 per load. Mm. So you keep 65% of what the load is worth? That is correct. So you give the carrier 35%? Mm-hmm. That is correct. Do you guys actually... Okay, so... Uh, you know what a tono is, truck order not used. Uh, how, how does that work? Do you guys actually pay it? Do you pay detention? How does this work? Um, regarding the truck order not used, we have to um, request it. If it's approved, obviously they will get approved. Uh, but sometimes, you know, we try to avoid those things if the truck is not on site by the time we cancel. You know, we have the right not to pay it. What about detention? The tension uh, we have, you know, to request it ahead of time. Um, sometimes the carrier don't complain too much, so um, we end up collecting the the tension time, but they don't get like a hundred percent of it. Mm. We have to make a profit as well of that. Wow. So you guys, basically, what you and I, I don't want to misquote you, but basically you're saying that if you'll you'll ask for the detention or you'll request it from the customer and if the, the the carrier doesn't request it you guys pocket it anyway correct wow give me some numbers what you guys are uh, now is there a training session where you, you you guys are taught to um for example tql the other day said we're taught to beat down those trucks is that something that you guys are, are trained to do as well Yes, we have to get the chipper truck booked on every single load. All right, so let's back up a little bit. Let's back up. Detention time. So if I get stuck at a if if I get stuck at a door, like like what happened to me about a about a couple of days ago. So I, I'm at this shipper and I literally, literally get there on time at eleven o'clock in the morning, right? Now, mind you, I'm a company driver, okay? So at 11 o'clock in the morning, I get there on time, okay? I did not get out of the door. I did not get loaded until 5.30 in the afternoon, I mean, in the evening. 5.30, five and a half hours, I was stuck in the door. Now, company drivers have to give two hours so after that two hours then i would get paid now i get paid three and a half hours for being stuck at the shipper now this is company driver now from what i'm understanding is that if i don't ask for that three and a half hours detention time as a uh, as an owner operator or or independent contractor I have to, they, the broker will pocket that money? How fair is that? So if I don't ask for it, you ain't going to turn around and tell me like, yo, lockout man, you know, we got three hours of detention time for you. Okay, give me that. They're going to pocket it anyway. That's crazy. Let's, uh, let's continue on. Um, for instance, to work with, five other employees and whoever has a cheaper truck will be booked on the load. Or even if someone already booked it, but I get another call that is cheaper, we'll just cancel that carrier. So you'll cancel the carrier. And what do you tell them? The load is being canceled by the customer. Wow. So uh, now hold on, because I'm, I'm going to explain this to people. So uh, we've all heard it. We'll book a load and then all of a sudden that broker will call us back and say, oh, the customer canceled the load. I have Angela from Trinity Logistics saying that that's their excuse because they actually found a cheaper truck. Um, that, that is correct. 
Wow, y'all hear that? So, if you already so owner operators, uh, lease contractors, if you book a load with Trinity Logistics, now this is Trinity Logistics. Now, I don't know about no no other brokers. If you got look, listen. If you guys have situations like that and you want to come on and talk about it, yo, come on and get at me. Lockout Men Podcast at uh Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. Or hit me up in the in the text, 216 2090 Hit me up in the text, man, so we can we could talk about how these brokers get over on you guys, man. So if you get if you already or if you already booked the load with them and then somebody come somebody come and say, "Hey, I can do it for $2, $10, $15, $20 cheaper." They'll call you back and say, "Oh, well, you know, the customer canceled the load." Oh, the customer canceled the load? Okay. Okay. Now remember about now, remember when I when I talked when I had the other podcast and the guy, the other gentleman was talking about he was on his way to the shipper, to I mean to the shipper to pick up the load, but he got called in the midst of going there and and he was and said he said that um that the the broker canceled the load. He said that the 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 care the the shipper canceled the load. Okay, can I still get paid for being on my way there? No. So, Trinity Logistics' excuse is, yo, customer canceled the load, even though another another trucker or another owner op or another independent contractor or a company call them up and say hey we'll do it for 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 cheap give it to us so what is your um i'm trying to ask as many questions as i can um do you guys find drivers for being late or do you uh wh what do you do with that we find them if they are late on certain appointment times um sometimes the the customer requires a crane to be on site, and if they miss their appointment, obviously they get charged per hour for those cranes. What is your number one commodity? Um, anything. It will be construction supply material. It could be, um, you know, food for the um, dry van reefer load. So food is an essential item right now during the, this pandemic, and you guys are still trying to charge as, as, or pay as little as you can to these carriers? Correct. Mm. Wow. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Even in the midst of a pandemic, that, as he said, that food is a commodity. Like, you you still try to undercut the the the, the owner operators, independent contractors, man. That's crazy. That is crazy. Wow. Uh, do you have a certain amount of money that you have to uh, save a month, or uh, how, how does this work? The money is always there from the customer. You can always request money from them. Um, there, everybody says keys right now. That that could be us. That could be anybody else. Is that the diesel price drop and everything? You know, we that we have to keep as much money we can in our pockets. Do you guys pay a fuel surcharge? I've never hauled for Trinity Logistics, so this is like news to me. Uh, do you guys charge a fuel surcharge? No. You don't pay for it? Uh, meaning to your customer, do you quote them a fuel surcharge as well? No, we don't. Wow. Well, there you have it. There you have it. Trinity Logistics, man. I mean, exposed. <laughs> is this young lady... <laughs> I don't think this young lady gonna pretty much have a job after that. <laughs> she pretty much exposed uh, Trinity Logistics. I mean, pretty much threw them up under the bus, man. But it's just unfortunate that these 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 brokers out here that's doing these to the to you guys, man. 
Let's hear with uh let's let's hear with this uh young lady. This now this lady, she's an owner operator and she's coming out talking about uh how the brokers is doing doing her. And I just wanted to bring something up. We don't really need help from the public. Hold on right quick. Hold on. Well. Wow. Hold on. Hold on right quick. Our freight rates have plummeted. To even haul a load, we're not even be able to make a truck payment, a trailer payment, repairs, buy the fuel to keep on running down the road. The rates have gone down to there's nothing for us. And it's terrible. A lot of trucks, uh, a lot of guys are losing their trucks we are the small business of America. Uh, probably 75% of us in the United States, we own our truck and trailers. We are not the ATA. Uh, we're not a mega carrier. We're all out here small business people that can hardly make it, but we're making sure you and our families have food on the table. After you make all these payments, the truck payments, the insurance, the trailer payments, your repairs, your oil change, fill up the fuel. There is nothing left. So what do we send home to our family to eat, to go buy groceries? There isn't anything. The small businessmen, the truck drivers, we're hurting really bad. So we need to do something about the brokers out here. They've cut the freight rates down to nothing. So you can't make a living, especially right now. I mean, you would think you're still paying the same prices in the grocery store, aren't you? But your freight isn't getting paid for the same price it once did. We're hauling it for nothing, and you still have to pay the high prices in the grocery stores to eat. That's friggin' ridiculous. Okay. It's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. That's what she wants to say. It's not fair. We still we still paying uh, the 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 prices that the grocery store chains and 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 the retailers are asking, but they is not getting paid for bringing it. They're not getting paid for bringing it, man. They're getting they're getting chopped down to nothing. And like she said, once they get finished with the fuel, the insurance, the payments, the this, and then then that, and that, well, where's the profit? Where's the profit? You know. Now you got some guys out here that will probably dispute, you know, what I'm saying. Like, yo, there's money to be made out here. You know, if you ain't want to be your owner operator, then go back to being the company driver. Well, I think that's what some of these guys going to have to end up doing, especially in this pandemic right now. You might you might just have to go back to being a company driver. You know, you you're not getting paid enough to take care of the expenses. If you don't have the, if you're not getting paid enough to take care of the expenses, then what's going to end up happening? Your truck's going to get taken from you, and you're going to have to end up going back to being a company driver to pay the the creditors for the truck that you still, I mean, that you don't have. Think about it. That's my number one, is how can you go down the road with the high prices? I mean, I mean not the high prices, but the high brokerage freight. I really screwed that up. Not even the high broker trade. It's plummeted. I'll get this straight here in a minute. I don't like doing videos too good. And the second thing is every time the federal government needs help from the truck drivers, whenever you got your hurricanes, your tornadoes, all of a sudden they exempt trucks, meaning the federal motor carriers, we have an ELD in this truck. And we have to log by that. Uh, tell us when we could sleep, when we could go potty, we could drive when we're tired. It's a very, very bad deal, this ELD. All right, so I, I've been on ELDs since the beginning of my career. Some drivers like it, some drivers don't. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's an agree to disagree in the ELD session of trucking. I mean... Yeah, uh, once your clock runs out, you can't drive. 
you got to you you got to do 30 minute you got to do a 30 minute break yeah after you do your 30 minute break you you got to you got 8 hours you got 3 clocks or well, actually 4 but you got 3 for the day got your drive time you got your shift and then you got your your 8 hour you got to work eight hours, and then you get a 30-minute break, and then you get three hours more to continue for your 11 hours of drive time. And you got 14 hours for on-duty time. Now, some of them say that the clock tells you what to do. Now, for me, like I said, I, it's an agree to disagree you know, my clock don't tell me what to do. You know what I'm saying? I can stop, move, stop within that 11-hour drive time anytime I want. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I could do my 30. I could do my 30 more. I can do whatever. You know, but it is an agree to disagree when it comes to the ELDs. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we got... We, when the federal government gets in a in a situation like like tornadoes or natural disasters or anything like that, they could say, "We're gonna cut your clock, bro. You can run all day, run all night, as long as you're doing it for us." But if you're not doing it for us, then you gotta abide by the laws of the clock. Just saying. So this pandemic, you know, some 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 drivers are are exempt now. You know, they can run all day, run all night, you know. But until this pandemic is over with, then they got to go back by the laws of the clock. So what do you do? What do you do, drivers? You got some people out here that's talking, yo, I'm about to park my truck. I'm about to I'm about to park my truck. I'm not about to do this. Hey, let's get a coalition together and go to Congress. I mean, go to DC. I got one guy here that says, don't do none of that. He says, don't do none of that. There will be the the food supply chain will be interrupted. It will be. It's just a matter of fact. So they don't know this. Here's how you fight them. You take it to the news media. The news channels are the only ones that can bring light on this subject and be able to get things done. Uh, just like uh, MT Field Corp are saying, you know, the, the things about, um, you know, people that get scammed or whatever, they, they put that on the, on the news and the news goes out and they talk to these people and they get their money back and things like that. Uh, that's the way to fight it. Get a news person out there. And if you want to fight the brokers from taking more and more of the money, then you give those brokers names out. That's how you do it. You fight them with your news. You fight them with the national news. So that's, he said that's how you do it. He said bump going to Congress. Bump going to D.C., bump parking your trucks, go to the news media. Think about it. That's not a bad idea. I mean, you know, when when you get when you get a, a news reporter involved in the situation, shit, they'll go over. They'll bend over backwards to get that story and to bring the story to the masses. That's how you fight it. You got to do something to get their attention. That's right. The only place you get people's attention is the news. That's it. You got to get the news and you got to get them involved. So what you do is you take snapshots. You take snapshots, big face trucker, of all these low rates and you send them to the news and you send them and say, I'm supposed to be happy, be out here working. Everybody else not working is at $600 a week. I'm supposed to be out here running this stuff for pennies. I'm losing money. And tell them what it costs to run your truck. Show them what they're trying to pay you to run America. That's how you fight it. 
So if every owner operator out there takes snapshots of these loads from these brokers and sends them and floods the emails of news media or even go down to their local news station and say, look, right here, take your phone, have it up on the brokerage and show them the 70 cents, 80 cents, a buck. And say, you know what happens when it's like this and if trucks can't uh, save enough money to repair when they break and everything, pretty soon there won't be that many trucks. Pretty soon you won't be able to buy food in the store. Exactly. Exactly. I, 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 I couldn't agree with him more. And I'm a company driver. But like I said, I got aspirations, you know. I got aspirations of 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 becoming a becoming an owner op, you know, for, you know, becoming a, a you know truck trucker owner operator or independent contractor. I got aspirations. I, I want to make that power move someday, but not right now, because right now, right now is not <laughs> right now is not the time. You know, right now, right now is not the time to go uh, on an operator or independent contractor right now because the race is just so, so garbage. But you got, like I say, you got guys like, you know, Rick, you know, that's putting the coalition together to make that trip out to D.C. And then you got guys right here that's telling you, yo, forget D.C., put it on the news. Put it on the news. All these broker, all these brokers, you know, they they doing you guys wrong. And for Trinity Logistics, well, you guys might just want to steer clear of them. <laughs> you know, you might want to steer clear of them. So, all right, well, that's it. That's all I got to say for this evening. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming on and hollering at your boy right quick. Yo, if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell, that bell, that bell, and that all button for more. Yo, go check out my reaction page. I, I'm begin. I'm going to go ahead and start throwing some content up on there because I got a lot of subscribers that sending me a whole bunch of crazy ass videos that that I'm just like side eyeing. You know what I'm saying? But I can't bring them and put them on my main page because, you know, YouTube always have a freaking issue. You know what I'm saying? Issue. Issue. Yes, YouTube. I'm talking to you. But anyway, yo, I want to thank everybody for watching. Yo, I really do appreciate it. And if you want to hook a brother up with some coffee, yo, link is in the description. I need some coffee. Link is in the description. Yo, on that note, like I said, hit me up with some coffee, and I will come back at you with another video. We are gone.